my tutorial on how to build an Android Eclipse app from scratch, I showed you how to take in user input, do something with it, and then display an output. What I didn't show you was how to prevent your app from crashing if the input is invalid. In this tutorial's case, the input would be invalid if anything except for numerical values, which includes blank text or white space, were inputted. When we added the added text to our layout, we restricted the input text to be only hyphens for negative numbers, a period for fractional numbers, and any numerical digit from 0 to 9. That means that there are only three possible invalid inputs, which are just a hyphen, just a period, or nothing. There are two approaches I can think of to prevent the app from crashing. One, check that the input is valid before parsing the input to a doubled integer or whatever. Or two, wrap your code that attempts to parse the input to a numerical value in a try-catch block. So let's start with the first approach. First, take in the input as a string, then use an if statement to test if it's valid. Okay, so this is the workspace from my last video that I was talking about. I'm just going to comment out the code we had before um, inside the button listener, and I'm going to start from scratch. So um, the first thing we need to do is uh, create an instance of the edit text, or reference to the edit text, and then we need to get the um, get the text as a string. So um, string text equals number dot get text dot to string. So now text contains whatever the user had in the edit text when he hit the calculate button. So we need to make an if statement to test if the input is invalid. So if the input, so if the text dot equals, because we're comparing strings here, um, if it equals just a period, then that's bad. Um, or if the text dot equals um, nothing, or if the text dot equals um, just a hyphen, then all those inputs are bad, that's not what we want, that's all invalid input. So what I can do is, um, if any of those are true, then it's bad. So, oops, um, this exclamation point is not, it's a not symbol, so um, if it's not any of these, which means that it is valid text, um, then you're good to go and you can do your calculations. So then num, no, it's, let's see. Um, and then right here we got the, um, the number as a double, we parsed it to a double. So let's parse it to a double right there. Now num is the numerical value of what the user inputted. And then, like, num uh, times equals 5. So uh, num equals num times 5 is the same thing. Uh, so this is the same thing as this. And then um, display.setText uh, num plus that. Um, actually, it's more correct to do, like, string.value of num. Um, that converts the number to um, a string. Well, this returns uh, the parameter as a string. So, and then we didn't um, remember I commented out this code, so uh, we lost our our instance of the the label. So, put it back there. And now I'm going to run this on the emulator and show you that it works even with invalid input. Um, it just won't do anything. Actually, let's add an else statement. Um, else, so. This is like, um, if the input is valid, then do your stuff with the valid input. Otherwise, um, display.setText uh, invalid input. And then, so it'll display invalid input if it's invalid. Otherwise, it'll actually do stuff with your text. So I'm going to show you this on the emulator right now. Okay, so here it is. Um, I'm going to type in... Uh, 5 should be 25.0 yep and so let's say I have no text um, this is invalid input so it says invalid input just a dash and you can't do two dashes in a row or anything so we don't have to worry about that uh, invalid input um, and then let's say we had just a period it'll give you invalid input so that's the first way to check if you have valid input and this will prevent your app from crashing. The other way is to use a try catch block. So I'm going to comment out uh, this stuff and um, I'm going to start from scratch again and just 
copy and paste it whenever I need to. But um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is show you what the try catch block looks like basically. So the first thing you have is try. Uh, you open that with a curly brace, you close it with a curly brace, and then um, you can catch uh, like an exception. This is um, this is the type of exception. This um, this could be like IO exception or um, exception. Just exception is just any exception. It doesn't matter what it is, it's going to catch it. Um, and then this is the like name of the exception, like the variable name of the exception. Um, and then you have to open it with a, a curly brace and close it with a curly brace as well. So if an exception is thrown in this try block, it's going to run the code in the catch block. There are multiple different exceptions. So the one that we're worried about is a number format exception. Number format exception. Um, you can call that like NPE. Oh no. And FE. The number format exception is when you try and parse text to a numerical value, but it can't be parsed to a numerical value. Like you can't parse a hyphen to a numerical value. It just it's not a number. But like if there was um if there was like a, a file not found exception, this wouldn't catch it. So um this would catch all of the number format exceptions and go into here, but it wouldn't catch any other exceptions. It wouldn't catch like um a file not found exception or IO exception or anything like that. Um, if this was just exception, it would catch anything. Like I just catch any exception and if any exception is found I just print like an error message. Sometimes you want to catch different exceptions in different ways so you can add two catch blocks. Well you can add as many as you want but for our case um, we're, go we're only going to do two. So we're going to do the number format exception and then we're going to do catch um, any other exception um, and yeah, so what's going to happen is if anything in this try block um, has a number, uh, throws a number format exception, it's going to go into this code. If it's not a number format exception and it's any other exception, it's going to go in here. So we can do display dot set text um, invalid numerical input. Um, that's what's uh, that's what's going to happen when uh, there's a number format exception, and when there's just any exception, um, it's going to be uh, set text um, unspecified exception but not a number but not an NFE okay so it won't go into this catch block um, if it's a number format exception which means you know that if it does go into it um, it cannot possibly be a number format exception or it would have already been caught in here. Well, it's caught anyways, but it would have been, uh, this code would have executed. So in your try block is where you're going to put the all the stuff that you're trying out, um, like where you parse your input. So string text, um, so we get the text. We don't need this if statement anymore because the catch, uh, the try catch block is going to determine if, um, if it's valid. Um, and yeah, just work just like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna run this on the Android emulator now. All right, so here it is. Um, anything we try and do right now should not run this uh, this catch exception block because um, anything we do should be a number format exception. So let's try five, maybe 25.0. Let's try hyphen, invalid numerical input, nothing, invalid numerical input, and then can't enter a plus sign, none of that, and then a decimal, so, or a, a radix point, whatever. It's all invalid numerical input. It's all caught as a number format exception. So, what I do, because I don't care to catch like a number format exception, usually I know what type of possible exception it can be, and usually I don't care what kind of exception it is, but that's just me, like, I don't know, when when you do more professional stuff, maybe you should care about it, because that's how you, that's how you get specific error codes, like when you get a log cat or, or just an error message on your computer, it's all caught through different exceptions, because you don't just want to give one general error message for anything, it should be specific to what the problem is but in my cases I don't care I'm trying to never have an error and if I do get one whatever like it shouldn't happen I I typically know so I just have that catch exception e display um, there's an error so I just do um, invalid error that's what I do probably not the best but I'll run this uh, actually I'm not gonna run it um, so yeah that's how you use a try catch block or an if statement to check for valid input
so just something else that I thought of um, when you catch an exception you should print the stack trace of the exception and what that does is it will print specific information about the exception to your error log or your log cat or whatever so it'll print what line it happened on um, what like specific information like what the actual exception is and stuff like that uh, so in this case the variable name of my number format exception is NFE so um, type in NFE dot print stack trace and uh, that'll print the stack trace to the error log and then um, if I were to do it for this catch block it would be the same thing except the variable name is E um, so you see the red underline under NFE doesn't exist um, just do E the variable name uh, dot print stack trace uh, that's a method for every exception there is um, and then it'll print to the error log so yeah